welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Rennie. I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh, and we have made it to 2021. <laughs> Thank God. It's great to have this panel uh, to kick off the year. Uh, Larry, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Larry. Charlie, welcome back. Thank you very uh, much, Josh. And uh, Rennie was here uh, to close out uh, 2020, uh, and so it's great to have I'm her. always glad to be here. I'm always glad at this point in my life to be anywhere. <laughs> mm. And I'm still hungry. Not much has mm -hmm. changed. We're going to be kicking off 2021's discussions uh, with The Firm by John Grisham. The only other Grisham video on our channel at the moment is uh, a review that I did for A Time to Kill. And that is the video, as we're filming this, that has the fourth most views on the channel. So Grisham gets a pretty good uh, response. Mm -hmm. And The Firm was the one that brought him to acclaim. A Time to Kill was his first book that he wrote. The Firm is the one that uh, put him on the map. Very good book. I was saying to Josh earlier, my daughter-in-law is a lawyer, and she said she ran through all the Grisham books that she could. She thinks they're very accurate. I think he, he does a fantastic job of talking about the process. I know with The Time to Kill, he did an amazing job going through the court process, the way that things would happen in a court, the way that they select the jury. Mm -hmm. It's just so informative, but, but at the same time, he's able to create a flowing story that has flushed out characters, a flushed out setting, a flushed out background. But uh, let's get to the discussion starter, put that on the table, uh, and okay. that is... There's no table here. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, we got rid of the table back in season seven. Oh, that's right. Come John on. Grisham's works present readers with a great deal of knowledge about particular factions of law or of the law process that he is concentrating. Do you find this to be true with this book? I've been taking several law classes. Most of them are certificate courses. That's why I thought uh, you'd be perfect to yeah, fill in. It was uh, a terrific book. You know, a fast read. It, even though it's over 400 pages, I couldn't put it down. I was actually on my phone So before I got the book. I'm on a lot of ethics as well. I have a degree, uh, not a degree, a, a certificate ethics and law. There are no ethics in it, you know? Um, and of course, just so we are all aware, for those of you who are new, few, uh, new viewers, subscribers, thank you so much. But there, this is open to spoil, so we, we spoil everything. We're we're like that, you know. But the court process, you know, it, and it depends on what kind of court. This was mostly this tax. Was, this concentrated on the firm really itself. Don't really get into court. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, this one concentrated on court. It's yeah. after the book yeah. is over. But right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but in this case, it concentrates on. Uh, getting a job at the law firm. Right, the firm. It was interesting to learn about how much lawyers make and have the ability to make yeah. within a period of time. It's crazy. And it how is. they can, by the time they're 50, they can be retired mm -hmm. and set for life. And have their own home, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. This one, though, has a bit more beef to it because of the yeah. corruption. Yeah, I, I would say that that is right. That's the emphasis here is we're looking at yeah. Yeah. the yeah. corruption of institutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's some stuff like like the billable uh, hours and all that yeah, kind of padding, thing. I remember I read padding. this book for the first time back when I was a kid, back when the movie was coming out. Mm -hmm. How's the movie? I didn't know that. Oh yeah. yeah this, the book Pretty came out in 1991, you know, right the year before I was born. But yeah, that's the thing that I learned about was like how they they bill anytime you're thinking about the yeah. client. You if you think about it, hour. if they get if they give it ten minutes, it's a full hour. Right. Yeah. Full, full hour. hour. And and also part of it, I'm sure, is to show the difficulties um, new law hires, associates, have to go through to prove themselves and to try mm -hmm. and make it eventually to partnership. But I read it when it was first out, saw the movie, and just a couple weeks ago saw about the last 20, 25 movies again. Of course, it does star Tom Cruise. I have to say, since I read the book a second time, and it is a number of pages, but I have to say, I read it in a day, and I read it in mm -hmm. a day because it is 90% dialogue, and that's something that I didn't like. I didn't think the exposition was often fledged out enough. And I also found, actually, there's 
no real humor in the book, which is an odd thing for any kind of novel. Well, and it all depends on your humor, though. Yeah. It depends um, on whether or no, not... Can, um, you can't, pick a, li you can't yeah. pick a line in there that's actually humorous. There's, There's irony. Yeah. It's full of irony. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the interaction between Mitch and Abby, some could say, you know. uh, has humor to it, but it depends on whether or not you find that funny. Well, I would say this. I originally liked the movie better than the book because the movie ended with the Mitch character going to a mob character played by Paul Servino, mm. and he comes in and wrecks the firm, and so Mitch and his wife get there at the time, it was only a million, and get off free. In the book, the mob is the firm to begin with. They right. established yeah. the firm to, to start and put it in Memphis so it would be a little bit off the FBI radar. Yeah. Downtown. And of course, he gets off, all the law finagling at the end, especially the um, mail fraud and uh, wire fraud, my daughter-in-law says every big uh, federal warrant has mail fraud and uh, mail fraud and a uh, wire fraud in it. Um, is that he goes through all the manipulation that would be um, applied yeah. to them, and he gets away, but he doesn't get away scot-free. He gets more money; he gets six or eight million, but he's mm. going to have to run for the rest of his life. And I dislike that um, again. Mm. I, I would prefer, because we like the love interest in uh, Mary Reynolds now, I would prefer that the hero get off <laughs> and not yeah. have to worry the rest of his life that the mob think, is going to I get I think it. it's an interesting twist, though, and I think, I think it's interesting the way that it remains a somewhat of a mind game to the reader. Mitch is very several steps ahead of everything as right. far as what he has planned, his uh, interaction with, thinking. Yeah, with both the FBI yeah, or the Thibbies. He's really clever, but he's not going far enough. He's only going to islands where that they're, they're already familiar with. That's a problem for the yeah. novel. Yeah. As um, long as he can go he beyond that. But he does take down the firm. He does yeah. take yeah. down the firm. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. About the firm, it, act, the actual firm itself, I think it was, uh, I think, what, this is five or seven stories? No, it was about five stories. The basement is where they put the paralegals in there. Paralegal, believe it or not, some may know this, some may not. Fun fact, paralegals are not lawyers. They cannot practice law. Right. When I was first retired, I did a lot of volunteering, and I volunteered for uh, the courthouse to help on the computers, which I never really learned the system, but I worked with the clerks who made minimal salaries. I won't say right. what they were, but I'll have to say, Lawyers came in all the time. I have this client and I have this case and I'm going up before the judge in 10 minutes. What should I do or what should I say? And the clerks would be telling them. Yes. $80,000 a year to start that was good. Yes. Well, the book makes it the big thing about money because mm -hmm. the crooks that are running the firm want that money to be the carrot that keeps their associates and their partners in mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. and going because they're... They give them limos and they give them country mm -hmm. club. The BMW. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. and they uh, give them a low mortgage loan for their house and they take them around to see the houses that are in the best places to buy. Mm -hmm. But those, right, and it keeps those, them from, uh, yeah. from yes. asking too many questions. Yes, you know. Tries to I mean, them more, right. uh, talking about the, the deaths that they mourn and then the sudden deaths of the two lawyers. Uh, in the beginning, yes. In the beginning, I think, was really what caused Mitch to draw a sense of suspicion. Right. Uh, and that was even before the they FBI approached him. Yes. Uh, yeah, and the reason they chose uh, the, new, the new guy is because, yes, even though he's fresh out of law school, being that he's brand new, he doesn't have all the experience, yet he has the most current and latest education, they chose him to say, hey, basically, mm. you're going to be in fear of your life for the rest of forever now, but, you know, you're working for the mob. So mm -hmm. it's well, but he didn't know he was exactly at the time he didn't know yeah, at that first time. it was right it was and I sometimes think, having looked at it twice, that he learns a little too much too soon. He's only there eight months, right, mm -hmm. and he's already by three months. Well, they they've already had the first two murders by mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. He's already seriously uh, concerned about them right. and per um, per gets involved. Problem gets involved with, I um, was a Gene Hackman in the movie, and he doesn't get killed off in the movie, but the detective that gets killed off in the book three-quarters of the way. Well, Lomax, the, the yes. one that uh, yeah. his brother from prison, Ray, yeah. suggested? Um, mm -hmm. The girlfriend did, yes. In the book, it was uh, Ray, 
uh, his brother from prison. Yeah. So you mean from a narrative standpoint, like he learns too much? Like, because I, I feel like there's not a lot of growth for any of the characters. It's just it seems like it's completely kind of plot driven. It is yeah. very, very driven, dialogue yeah. driven, very dialogue. Mm, yeah. There's all, there so much dialogue in here. For me, I found it to be easy. Yeah. Or mm, easier, yeah. but I wish that uh, we learned a little bit more about Bendini. Uh, oh, because yeah. it's uh, the head of it. Yeah, the, it was Bendini, Lambert, and Locke. Locke uh, yes. Lambert and Locke are living. They're in. Well, they're you get 61. Locke. Locke is the one with the black yeah. beady eyes yeah. that would yeah. scare everybody. Lambert was the one. He was approachable, kind of like the George Hamilton style mm. hot shot. Yeah. Uh, but Bendini was the one that really Ran put it, it together. Yeah. He died in 1970, uh, but they didn't say. I think it would have been interesting if we knew how he died. Yeah. Because yeah. I think, well, they tell us that the mob set it up uh, yeah. and they named the mob family but they don't really give us a lot of beginning beginning of it mm. we get it as it is yeah. when he comes in yeah bendini was brought in by the mob uh, yeah. I, i'm thinking that with the numbers together i'm thinking that he was in his 50s maybe 60s when he died i think maybe he was killed off too he could have been but they don't make mention no, to they it don't. Uh, I'm thinking this was set in 1988 because they don't give a year. Right. Because yeah, even though yes. it was written in 1991, it was the Redskins had just won the Super Bowl, and that was in 1987. Oh, you wouldn't know that. I didn't know that. The copy I have is the 20th anniversary. That's when the there's a difference between yeah, so when the book was not, released and when the well, of course, book yeah. was set. So, like I said, I I don't know. Um, I like the the description of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pichata. That, oh yeah, uh, the food. Pichata. Is it? Yeah, pichata. Pichata, right? Was it pachata? Have I been saying it wrong my whole life? Pachata is a, is music. Oh, oh that's right. Yes, mm. I should know this. I'm a musician. Mm. Yeah, the, the dish that veal, the veal dish that his wife cooks for him, yeah. and the pasta on the side, and the, the scallops, the and the wine. Yeah, it's just delicious. I just feel like there's some missed opportunities, like uh, the blackmail setup, right? Mm. Uh, that that never really goes anywhere. That could have been a point of real tension for Mitch mm. and his wife, right? And it's mm -hmm. just like, but it never goes anywhere. It's just like it happens. They there was the yeah, they took the pictures, mm. but they didn't really. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Uh, in the, the his first visit to the Grand Caymans, uh, yeah. the yeah. prostitute that they set him up with. Mm -hmm. There was that the tension that when she was going to leave to take to look after her parents after her mother got very yeah. sick. It was, a, it was a it was a charade or it was a yes, yeah so it was she a facade where do other things. Right. I think she did get there though. I think in the movie they the must detour. show her the pictures because she has a fight with him and she does leave. Yeah, they have a fight yeah. at, at that's outside a, a restaurant or something. Yes, that, yeah, that's yeah. predictable though. That I think that this does a great job but in the making book, the they predictable are much more, not predictable. Yeah. They're never separated. But yeah. what seems to be separated is fake. Yeah, and she she made mention to the FBI saying that she wants the money and that they're separated. It was Ooh. set up. Tammy Hemphill's story is very interesting. Her incorporation into the the fact that she goes uh, under various aliases to help yeah. out. The fact that yes. her husband yes. legally changed his name to Elvis Aaron Hemphill yes. and became a <laughs> I started drinking her later. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he was in Vegas performing mm -hmm. at the But time. to get back to the setting, I think that it was a smart decision to have it set in Memphis, not just because it's of the out of the way, yeah. But John Grisham is from yes. the South. Yes. He I'm going to say Virginia, yes. Virginia, Virginia, Mississippi. So yeah, he was a congressman from Mississippi. I was going to say, Democrat. wasn't he a lawyer as well? Yeah, he was a lawyer so too. He, he also passed the bar, and that's hard. <laughs> Very difficult. I took a practice LSAT. Uh, I, I was like right below average, so mm -hmm. it took me four and a half hours to, just to get through the the bar exam. When you take the bar, you pretty much you got constitutional law, civil law, everything. You got you go through everything, criminal law, all of it. White collar crime, blue collar crime. But even though you have a f this field in law was taxation, but as soon as he got on the firm, I think within a few months he had to go to Washington DC for a four and a half day seminar, continuing education. That's what lawyers, doctors, all of yes, them. Well, I technically by law work for what I do. I have to do continuing education. But well I think that makes the novel realistic in many of ways. Of course, that's what I was gonna yes. say too. It makes it very realistic. Because the one kind of mm -hmm. says continuing education, what a joke. I think it's a I think John Grisham's writing what he knows. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, what I was gonna say. And and but the way that he, he's able to spin 
in things too. Uh, he he knows the different the, the structure, but he changes it around to make it fitting for a uh, Mitch McDeer's situation. Yeah, but it has to include all of the uh, material going in and out of the Cayman Islands and mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of transfers blind transfers and masking money and laundering money because mm -hmm. they're laundering mm -hmm. money. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of the firm is to launder money mm -hmm. for the mob. And they never, the turnover rate was zero. No one lied. Well, they did towards the end wonder if they could kill both Mitch and his wife and if that wasn't, wouldn't be too suspicious that maybe they shouldn't do that. But they no. probably might have done killed him if they could have gotten a hold of him at the end. They pro you know, they probably yes. would have. It's yes. pretty sad. You know, you got ethics in everything. The d double, triple, maybe even more. The, they called it padding. Pad the file. The guy went out for a hot dog in his brand new BMW. 150 But these people, these clients, some of them were honest clients in the book. Most of them were just paying millions in order to, no, they would, they would pay what, like, up to like 10,000, I mean, a lot, they'd pay like, lots of money to hide millions in the islands and wherever, so it was up to these guys to make sure that happened. In a typical law firm, you have lawyers that will charge you. Oh, they charge 300, 400, yeah. 500, and more yeah. per hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. some, not mm -hmm. all, but some, you call for a consult. Most places it's free. They'll mm -hmm. give you a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. There's one place I've studied, I have studied, I, I've, I was uh, reading about like 300 or 250 just for the first half hour on the phone. State what's going on. I'm telling you, Grisham should get a hold of the Epstein case because that looks like yeah. one where yeah. they're going to try and kill everybody at all. Yeah. And that's He's real life. touched nonfiction. Yeah. I read The Innocent Man, which was about Ron Williamson, uh, who was a former minor league baseball player who was uh, accused of murder, deemed guilty and sentenced to death. And then 11 years later, they found out that he was innocent. I thought it was fantastic. I think he did a great job telling that story and giving us uh, a background on that. But Grisham's great with whatever he's yeah. writing. Uh, he wrote about football and playing for pizza. Sorry, too. Oh, no, yeah, you mentioned Epstein too, and that's uh, yeah. that, you see that with the yeah. uh, with the blackmail and all that being. Mm -hmm relevant to what's going on right now with that. There's going to be a book that comes out about it. It's just going to of be a matter of who writes it. So. Under assumed name, pen name, probably. Mm -hmm. so well, it has to play out yet. They haven't even mm -hmm. gotten into court yet, but they tried to assassinate mm -hmm. the judge last mm -hmm. week in New Brunswick. Usually I'm on top of these things, you know. But already then, do we have any final thoughts? I would say that not a hard read, but it's a good read. And I would call that one of the novels that is really a good read. And once you start it, you will want to know what happened. I preferred uh, A Time to Kill by uh, The Innocent Man, uh, but I still think that The Firm, it was a very inventive work. It did a great job making the best out of a mind game with that cat and rat chase. So, or, or cat and mouse. Yeah, mouse cat and mouse, yeah. Actually, it was more like a chess game because it was uh, Mitch McDeer and the... Uh, the firm itself, uh, but you had the influence of the FBI. He really had fortitude to break away from both, but it meant him and his wife and his brother living out the rest of their days on the run. Right. Yeah, so uh, that, that's another question too. Right? Like we know he's on the run from the mob. Is he on the run from the feds too? Probably. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, he did yeah. not be good on the mm -hmm. on the deal that they had. Yeah. Right? And I think they original. Yeah, they originally said, "We'll work with you if you work with us." And that's usually how it goes. And, and again, he didn't know he was working for the mafia. Unless he get pulled over. You, the, you work with them, they'll work with you. Uh, it's yeah. happened to me. Uh, kind, yes sir, no sir. Yeah, I was like, going to law, whatever. You know? Well, what we know for sure is uh, they're going to have children. They're going to start a family. So they also have to remember, too, the mob will go after anyone. Mm -hmm. Little children like myself. And it's terrible because the mob is like that. Hey, Charlie, uh, that just came to me. Uh, from this angle, you look like a the new new. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're going to edit that. Okay. <laughs> How would we rate this? Uh, zero to five stars, half stars permitted, Larry? Ah, uh, well, I was very surprised at how flat I thought it was. Like I, the first time I read it, I really liked it. This time, uh, like I said, I just didn't see anything happening with the characters as far as growth as they are as people and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm gonna go with a with a two. I think you know it's a good read. It's a fast read. You know, there's not gonna be a whole lot uh, that you get out of it. You know, it's just for fun, so I, I just say it too. I would give it a three and a half to a four. It's been very popular. It's been around for 20, 25 years. People are still reading it. It's top read. And I would say read it and also see the movie, which is a, an excellent adaptation, although they have 
different emphasis between them, but mm. they're both very, very good. I'm going to give it four cookies out of four, five cookies, four okay. out of five. I'm going to give it a four as well. From what, uh, Renny, uh, you told me about the film, uh, it seems like the film does what they need to in order to abide to the the box office checklist, I save, like to call save it. Save the hero. I like the fact that this book really did not conform to the box office checklist so much. It was, there were box office elements to it. I think that it was very unique, not predictable the way that I've noticed in other uh, well, with, it's works. It's too, too complicated for an easy adaptation, but I think he probably had in mind a script when he wrote all of that dialogue. Mm. But at the yeah. same time, I think that with as it is with many of his other works, uh, he has an outstanding grasp when it comes to what he knows mm -hmm. as far as law is concerned, yeah. and he incorporates it into here. Yeah. And in this case, uh, the concentration is on the firm. The uh, the particular details as far as a uh, a criminal chase is concerned. I remember my grandparents, uh, when I was just starting my book collection and just starting to acquire Grisham's novels, uh, they got me The Pelican Brief and something I else. Like the Pelican Brief, yeah. Mm. They didn't want to give me The Firm immediately because right. they thought that it was a bit adult, it was a bit suggestive for... Risking it. The interaction with the prostitute. Mm. The drinking. I don't think it was that... Um, it's real life, though. This, risque this, or yeah. suggestive. Well, yeah, no, I, said, I probably but, said the wrong thing, but like I said, this happens in yeah. real life. I mean, things like this could happen. But yeah. it's yeah. it's a novel, so exactly. All of a sudden, Let's done. keep it that way. If you're interested in checking out uh, the farm, here is uh, my copy. This is Grisham's second book, but it is the one that put him over the top as yeah. far as uh, his long-term career is concerned. He's still writing books to his dad. I'll say this, even though I'm a confirmed book holder, I don't have a nook or anything that you would read online. I have enough I do online. I discovered a novel77.com that has full, uh, they have this and they have it copyrighted. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, they oh, have sorry. it copyrighted. Yes. And read all of it uh, on my computer. Now they didn't have the last of the wine, but they had the firm. You have wine without me? It's a bit more familiar. I prefer physical books and I encourage I physical mm -hmm. books. But I have to say, it, for uh, people that um, do use the tablets and are interested, thousands and thousands of books are available that way. I have the County Library edition and it's also the 20th anniversary edition but it's from the County Library. While I was waiting for this, I was on Dot 77. That's the site I found it on. And I was reading it before, until the book came in. Alrighty then. Be sure to join us next time on another episode of Literary Gladiators. For Dan, keep reading. Bye. Hey, hi, fans of Literary Gladiators. We're going to be going to discussing next a poem by Percy Shelley from the Romantic period of the British Empire called Ozymandias, set in the vast deserts of Egypt on the panel. It's Larry, me, Rennie, Charlie, and our host Josh, and we would like you to support us on Patreon.